Hi guys. I'm Doron and uh, I define myself as a wireless enthusiastic. Yeah? This is what I do, this is what I love, this is what I think about. My wife doesn't like it, but that's the way it is. Yeah? <laughs> so uh, I'm the CEO Wi-Fi of Huawei's data communication product line, which means that I'm responsible for enterprise-grade Wi-Fi with a mission of coming up with the best enterprise-grade Wi-Fi technology in the world. So uh, to accomplish this uh, very ambitious uh, mission, my team is working in two distinct directions. The first is what we call holistic R&D. We work on all of the aspects of Wi-Fi, starting from antennas and smart antennas, RF, baseband technology, OFDM and MIMO, my field of expertise, the mathematical part, going to the Mac, localization, chip architecture, and so on. And the second is Wi-Fi standardization. We're very active. As you can uh, imagine, we were worked very hard on uh, Wi-Fi 6 standardization until recently, and now moving to 11 BE to uh, Wi-Fi 7. If we go back to the history of my, uh, my career, then uh, I was CTO of Rancom Technology, the company that invented OFDMA. So you can imagine that this plays a very important role for me now in Wi-Fi 6. And with the inclusion of OFDMA, it's like the uh, closure of a circle. And thinking about uh, you know, scientific work, then I've been teaching in the last um, 14 years a graduate level OFDMIMO course at Tel Aviv University. And I've written uh, one book, the second is in the making, will be this, this time in Chinese, 25 uh, papers and some uh, 80, 80 uh, patent and patent, patent application, everything in uh, uh, wireless communication, a wireless enthusiastic, right? <laughs> So uh, thank you for the question. I want to uh, spend a few seconds about, uh, about the history of Wi-Fi. So Wi-Fi is definitely one of the greatest uh, miracles in the uh, technological miracles in the modern era. And the reason that Wi-Fi is so successful that is twofold. The first, it is very simple. It is very effective. It is a plug and play, doesn't require an operator, doesn't require a very difficult uh, installation. It simply works and works uh, very well. And the second one is that it scales up very beautifully, very easily with the, with the bandwidth. Think about how difficult it was for, uh, let's say, the cellular community to come up with uh, 5 megahertz and 10 megahertz, go from 5 to 10 in WCDMA. In, in Wi-Fi, this is very easy, yeah? So, so from a, a, a technological point of view, what was underlying this success is two things. One of them is a great access technology, you see some ACA that is very, very simple, doesn't require the, the uh, difficult installation coordination and so on. And the second is OFDM technology, OFDM modulation that scales up very nicely, as I said, with the, with the bandwidth. But Wi-Fi, as I, I tend to say, is a victim of its own success, yeah? So when Wi-Fi wi was designed originally, nobody thought about stadiums, nobody thought about the huge uh, venues, nobody thought about the uh, high density enterprise. And when you take a look, for example, at the performance of Wi-Fi 4 and 5 in dense enterprises, what you see is a great like degradation in total capacity when the number of stations uh, uh, becomes uh, uh, very big. The reason is that now many, many stations have to compete for the air, and CSMACA becomes uh, uh, amazingly inefficient. So Wi-Fi 6, if I can like try to summarize the big messages of uh, Wi-Fi 6, they are also twofold. The first is improvements in the link level. You want to come up with a much better link level. So you have like 8x8 MIMO and you have uplink multi-user MIMO and you have 1K QAM you want, and you have uh, uh, TWT. You want to come up with a great link which is of higher capacity. But the second thing I think is more important, more fundamental, especially for the enterprise, and this is the inclusion of OFDMA uh, technology, which serves like a multi-dimensional solution to many of the problems of Wi-Fi in enterprise and uh, dense enterprise. So if you work in, with Wi-Fi 6 in contrast to the earlier versions, so now locally within your uh, uh, BSS, Stations do not have to compete over the air because with, with OFDMA, multiple stations can transmit to the AP and the AP can transmit to multiple st stations at the same time. So we see that even if we increase the number of stations a lot, the total capacity stays almost the same. So to summarize, Wi-Fi 6 has two big messages. One of them is coming up with a great link level performance, 8x8 MIMO, 1K QAM, 
uplink multi-use RMIMO, and the second most importantly is OFDMA, which turns Wi-Fi into something that is much more similar to, let's say, a cellular technology and is extremely, extremely uh, effective. So as I said, I was like a CTO of the company that uh, pioneered OFDMA. So for me to see like uh, OFDMA uh, penetrating Wi-Fi, make, making this a uh, huge uh, la like leap in this technology, you know, warms my heart. So, so, you know, when, when I listen to our competitors and other guys in the industry, they're mostly focusing, let's say, in the aspect of uh, Wi-Fi 60, the huge, let's say, additional amount of uh, uh, spectrum, they're usually focusing on like bandwidth hungry applications or uh, uh, delay latency sensitive applications like AR and VR and so on. But my perspective, and again, and again I'm an enterprise guy, my perspective is a little bit different. So of course, on top of uh, increasing the bandwidth and having, uh, you know, uh, you can satisfy the, the bandwidth hungry applications. Of course, you have huge uh, bandwidth, you have less interference, and you can hop between frequencies, you know, with DMA, and you can reduce latency, and you can have diversity. On top of all this, this is extremely important, but on, on top of all this, in the enterprise aspect, uh, Wi-Fi 6C actually allows you to have a deployment which is wideband. Because uh, one key thing that I think is not uh, very well understood for, for non-enterprise guys is that in an enterprise, if I want to deploy a 160 megahertz uh, uh, AP, I don't have to have only 160 megahertz. I need to have availability to three times 160 or five times 160. So currently in, uh, in the five gigahertz uh, band of, uh, of Wi-Fi 5, simply cannot be done. And this is exactly what we see. Even if you have a 160 uh, megahertz device, you cannot deploy enterprise. Wi-Fi 6E opens the door to wideband Wi-Fi APs in the enterprise. Because, for example, currently in Europe, you would have two uh, channels of, uh, uh, of 160. I think this would be the, the 50 and the 144. But in the, in the 6E era, and things are, I think, from a regulation point of, of view, are moving very fast. We're going to have a bunch of these type of channels. So it opens the door to having enterprises with APs uh, working at 160 channels. So this is like unleashing all of the OFDMA, multi-user MIMO, high bandwidth capability, in, including low latency and AR, VR, but also in the very high density deployments, also in the enterprise. For, so for us, this is very, very important. Now, from a, a technology point of view, one more thing that is very uh, uh, important is that from a five signal processing like or MAC protocol uh, perspective, five gigahertz, six gigahertz, the modem doesn't care. So if I have a technology that works at, at the upper five or lower five or even in the 2.4 gigahertz, it would work also in the six plus uh, 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 gigahertz. So I don't see a problem. Actually, we don't see a problem with actually migrating all of the knowledge, technology, and know-how of the five gigahertz to the, to the six gigahertz. The, the main, uh, let's say, challenge that you have here is on the RF and the antennas. And I think this is not a very significant channel. So I think together with a very uh, uh, fast pace of regulation of FCC and, uh, and others, I think that uh, we're going to see a very fast ramp up of uh, uh, vendors uh, pushing uh, Wi-Fi 6C portfolio very fast. The technological challenge from the implementation point of view, I think is not very significant. And as I said, extremely important, both like in residential Wi-Fi, but also in enterprise Wi-Fi. So, uh, so it's a very good question, and I think uh, it, it needs to be dis demystified, yeah? So first of all, you're totally right. Uh, you know, Wi-Fi is a standard-based and standard-led solution. And actually, in this aspect, in this like avenue, uh, you know that uh, Huawei essentially was leading the Wi-Fi uh, 6 standardization process. The chairperson of uh, Wi-Fi 6 of 11AS is Dr. Uh, Osama, uh, which is of Huawei. So, of course, we, uh, we don't only follow the standard uh, development and try to catch up from a technology point of view, but we try to assume a leadership uh, a position in the standard. So this is like one, one uh, direction and uh, one avenue. But uh, uh, personally speaking, my uh, vision and my mission 
is uh, trying to come up with differentiation that is above and beyond the standard. And I think Huawei is investing a lot compared to our competitors in trying to come up with differentiation. So, you know, at first glance, like you said, you say, okay, it's a standard based solution, but many of the features that we're currently pushing, researching, investing a lot are outside the standard. And I can give you like a, a few examples. The first is smaller antennas. And I discussed this in the WBA uh, autumn webinar. I showed our uh, like amazing design for a uh, smart antenna and smart antenna totally are not defined in the IEEE standard. This is totally like a vendor implementation specific uh, uh, feature. So you can build your own amazing smart antenna and you can enhance the system performance uh, very, very significantly. This is, has nothing to do with the standard because this is like totally oblivious or transparent to the standard. Other examples are, for example, downlink modules on my microcoding. So for the standard defines all of the information exchange between station and AP and the feedback and the CSI, but standard doesn't tell you how to pre-code. And here you know that everybody knows now, yeah, <laughs> that Huawei is a 5G leader. So we can take like the, the huge amount of research and the investment that we've done in 5G. And now that uh, also Wi-Fi 6 is OFDMA, MIMO based, very similarly actually to, uh, to, uh, to 5G. So for example, downlink multi-user MIMO precoding algorithm not defined in the standard. Of course, it has to be like compatible with the standard, but not defined in the standard. And uh, we're doing something very different than our competitors. And uh, we show a 10 dB, 11 dB gain difference, yeah, differentiation over our competitors using a totally different uh, uh, precoding scheme. Another thing that uh, I think is easy to imagine that uh, you can do in a, like a vendor specific way is how you manage interference. Standard doesn't tell you how to man manage interference. And we've, we've uh, like harnessed uh, uh, all the huge uh, research that we've done on wireless uh, along the years and our uh, capabilities and our product employ totally differentiated uh, features when it comes to mitigating interference. And we can mitigate even 20 dB more interference than other uh, competitors. And of course, eventually all of these translate into, uh, into superior performance. So, so to summarize, of course it is uh, um, IEEE standard uh, based, but we are the leaders yeah, of these standards and Osama, Dr. Osama was the chairperson of 11AX. And, but on the, other, on the other hand, we have another route which is differentiated features. And also there we're putting a lot of effort, I think a lot more than our competitors and we're reaching like amazing results. Well, you know, it's funny because uh, you cannot have a discussion in 2020 about almost anything with almost anybody without, uh, you know, being asked about AI. Even my wife asked me, hey, Doran, what are you doing? Uh, where are you implementing AI in your wireless network? Yeah. <laughs> so it's a, it's a definite must. So essentially, from my vision is, is twofold when it comes to uh, AI in wireless. The first and is something that I think is... Um, is uh, relatively common uh, in our days and also quite natural to understand. Of course, if we have AI, we can have uh, good management of the network. We can include AI into our radio resource management, RM layer. We can detect faults. We can do load balancing. All these things are, I think it is, let's say, natural to believe that they are data driven. For example, if I see using my data that is being collected, that a single AP is being like starved while another one in terms of stations and another one is uh, very loaded. This is like data driven. I can have a data driven load balancing. I can have a data driven RRM. All, all of these things uh, I think make a lot of sense. But, but we don't stop only in, in, in this layer. What we are trying to do now in these, in these days and we're cooperating I think with the best professors in the world like Professor Permeter of BGU we're trying to take AI and to use it in order to significantly improve also other layers. So examples that we're trying to do, and I've been like doing MIMO for uh, maybe uh, 20 years now, is trying to come up with a, a MIMO detection that is based on AI. And we can do essentially better MIMO detectors when we're invoking, uh, let's say, uh, uh, CNN or RNN. AI uh, networks. Another thing that is uh, very interesting, and also I think, uh, like you know, it can it can excite the imagination. 
scheduling, Wi-Fi scheduling, especially when we're moving from OFDM to OFDMA, and especially when we have much larger bandwidth, becomes extremely complex. And think about also the additional dimensions of MIMO and so on. So coming up with an AI-based scheduler seems to be like a, a, a natural and good idea. But I want to, uh, you know, to uh, finish with a very, uh, I think, intriguing uh, example. Think about uh, a rate uh, selection, or rate adaptation. I need to take a look at the MIMO matrix. This is like the rate selection problem. And I need to try to figure out what would be the best rate, what would be the best MIMO mode uh, that can achieve the maximal capacity using this uh, MIMO metric that I'm encountering. So, so think about an AI machine, and we're currently like working uh, you know, specifically on that, an AI machine that can look at the metric. I just give the metrics. I don't try to like, uh, tell her uh, compute post-processing SNR here or that of maximum likelihood MMSC or anything. Just look at the metrics and from, the, from uh, you know, processing the metrics using, for example, deep learning, from millions of examples that we're generating using, for example, MATLAB or C simulations, the AI can look at the metrics and can identify, hey, this is a, a, a rank four, like four spatial stream MCS7 metrics. So, so I think to summarize that on top of like, the very natural, you know, RRM uh, system level management, fault detection uh, work that can be done with AI, and we're doing that, we can also take AI to take, uh, use AI to take our find, our Mac to the next level. And I think MIMO detection, scheduling, and uh, RCA, just looking at the metrics and understanding which MIMO mode would be best for it are beautiful examples.